Yeah. Man, that is incredible, isn't it? Over 500 people serving at 27 different projects all across Midland and Odessa. Man, what an amazing day of serving. And I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to all of the people that showed up to serve. Thank you to all the project leaders, the, the unsung heroes of this event. All the project leaders, you, you go early, you meet with the, with the contacts at the different projects, you get a plan, you're leading people. What an incredible job you did. The zone leaders and the leadership up top, Pastor Daniel Hernandez, great job. You and your team, Ivy and Lyric, they put months of work into this. Thank you for all of your hard work. What is, it's amazing. And we're going to take today to celebrate that. But if, if you would turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 10, we're going to get there here in a few moments. You might be holding your place for a little bit, but I promise we will eventually get there and we'll eventually read some scripture. If you'll trust me, we'll get there, I promise. Uh, I'd like to welcome our online campus. If you're joining us online, thank you for being here. Uh, we are glad that you're watching today, whether you're at home because you maybe feel ill Maybe uh, you're, you're still trying to just be careful and avoid crowds. That's, that's cool. Maybe you're traveling. Maybe you don't live here. In fact, most of us don't really realize there's a lot of people that don't even live in Midland and Odessa that engage and attend Mid-Cities online each week. In fact, I just want to give a shout out to Renato. Renato serves at our church. He's a member at our church. He's actually every week, he's in the chat engaging. If you ever watch on Facebook, you'll see a guy named Renato post. Um, he's, he's posting links and all that stuff. He's a member of our church. He's been through Mid-Cities 101. He's been through Dream Team 201. He's actually right now in Grow 301. I know because I lead that class and get to see him on FaceTime. And the reason that he's on FaceTime is because he lives in Brazil. He's actually never been to a Mid-Cities physical campus. He's never even been to Midland, Odessa. And hopefully that'll change soon, maybe around Christmas time. Renato, I'm sure, is on serving today. But, but, but maybe we'll get to see him in real life. But he's a member of Mid-Cities and he serves week in and week out. So thank you, Renato. And also it's just a great, yeah. It's also just a great reminder that, that what happens here can, can go across the world, can change the world. And what happened yesterday can also change not only our community, but the world. Well, have you ever had a moment that changed your life? Maybe it was a few seconds, maybe it was a period of time, but it changed the tra trajectory of your life from that point forward. Maybe it was a conversation Maybe it was a traumatic event. It was a tragedy. It was just a powerful experience that in that moment you, know, you knew that your life would never be the same again. I have a friend. Her name is Susie. She went on a 10-day mission trip to South Africa in 2009. I had the pleasure of leading that trip. She was one of the 18 people that went on that trip with us. And that trip, that 10-day period of time, that moment, in that moment, she fell in love with the people of South Africa. And it sent her on a journey to know that her next mission was to, to move there and be a long-term missionary. And I'm happy to tell you, she's been there for the past several years, serving the people in and around Cape Town, South Africa. That moment, that 10-day mission trip moment led to a mission. For me, I was sitting right here in this room at a wedding in 2006, right about right there. I was sitting right there. And the pastor who was standing about right where I am right now was reading from Proverbs chapter 31 about the virtuous woman, about the model woman and what we should desire. And he's talking in, in, the, in the scripture, the context is giving advice to a man who's looking for a wife. This is what a great wife looks like. And, and, and the scripture says that, that she's worth far more than rubies. And in that moment, I knew that my friend at the time Sheila Hoffman at the time was that woman for me. And so that moment sent me on a mission. And that mission was to try to trick her into marrying me. And I'm happy to say I was successful in that mission. And I asked her to marry me. She said yes. And we stood up here once again, right where I'm standing right now. And we entered into covenant marriage relationship that sent me on a new mission to be the best husband that I could be. Sometimes I succeed in that, sometimes I fail in that. You can ask Sheila about all the dirt if you want to. But that moment sent me on mission. 
There was a group of people outside of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. They had gathered to hear their leader and their Lord and their teacher speak. His name was Jesus. He had been dead. He had been crucified, dead, and buried. And he had been raised to new life. And he had been hanging out with them, talking with them for the past couple of weeks or, you know, past couple of days. And, and it's time for him to go back to heaven. And, but before he does, he has some important words for them. He says, go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I'll be with you till the end of the age. He makes this promise and he gives this commission to them. That moment for those people sent them on mission. And that mission set the world on fire. Amen. We are here today talking about Jesus because that moment set that group of people on mission. And if you think back in your own life, I'm sure you could think of moments that have changed the trajectory of your life. As a church, we exist. Our goal, our mission is to love God, love people, and make disciples It's not just words on a shirt. It's not just words on a wall or a cute thing that we put on print pieces. It's really the mission. It's what we want to do. It's what we want to be as a church. We want to love God, love people, and make disciples. And what we experienced yesterday with Mid-Cities Church is really just a coordinated effort. Weeks and months we talked about there's a lot of planning that goes into this. It's a coordinated effort to set a stage, to create an environment to create an opportunity for you to have a moment with the hopes that that moment would set you on mission. And today we're going to take some time to hear some different stories, some different ways that people were impacted yesterday. We're going to celebrate. We're going to have a great time. But throughout every story, throughout every question, throughout every scripture that we're going to look at, I want this question to be going through your mind. I want to invite you to consider this question. How do I turn my moment into a mission? How do I turn my moment into mission? I'd like to go ahead and invite my friends up. We've got some people that are going to come up. They're going to share some stories. Um, the Alexanders and the, the Willards are going to go ahead and come up. And as they come up, I want to share some other stories. They're, they're going to share in person. But, but yesterday as you were serving, you probably, if, if you were there, you got a little card. And that card asked one question, how did serving impact me today? And so people share, they put different things down. I want to read you a few things that are just, they just leapt out to me. All of them were incredible. Every, every card, we had, you know, 500 cards. It took a while to read through all of them. Uh, but it, 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 was, it was really cool to see how God had impacted each and every person that attended yesterday. But here's a few uh, that stuck out to me. Ashley, who was serving at Dowling Elementary in Odessa, she says this. She says, today was the beginning of our service journey. And I must say, I love it. The feeling of lending a hand is amazing. Today is my birthday, and what better time to give back. Happy birthday to me. So she spent her birthday serving for the first time in a, in a way like this. She says, I feel the love in my heart overpouring, and I cannot wait to serve again like this. So cool. Cindy, who was serving at Fairhaven, said, Serving today with Mid-Cities has blessed me with a growing sense of community. We're new to the church and this project encouraged me to look outward again after being isolated due to COVID concerns. I loved hearing about the amazing work done at this awesome organization and I'm leaving with a joyful heart today. How cool is that? Rachel, who was serving at the Oaks Academy in Midland, she said, uh, serving today for the first time was a wonderful experience. It was a great opportunity to become acquainted with some of my spiritual family, which was enjoyable because I'm pretty much a loner and an introvert. I gained so much more than I gave. That's cool. Isn't that true when we serve, we gain so much more than we give? I gained so much more than than I gave and I can't wait to do it again. And finally, David, who was serving at West Texas Food Bank in Odessa, uh, just commented how amazing it was to see the 14 or so kids alongside their, their families just serving away. One group of kids hit their goal of 135 boxes packed and then went and asked the staff if there was more that they could do. And it really touched his heart. And he makes this comment at the end of his, at the end of his um, story. He said, traditions of serving are being started that will far outlive me. Isn't that cool? 
Well, we've got some awesome guests with us today. Um, We want to hear their story, kind of how God impacted their life as well. Um, Right here next to me is my friend Jeremy and his son Jarek. My son Pace and Jarek are in school together, right? You guys are you guys are friends, right? Um, He's he's like, yeah, I guess I guess I'll claim him as a friend. But um, one of the cool things about the Willards is that you guys had three generations serving on the same project yesterday, right? Can you comment a little bit about how God impacted you? Well, why, don't you go, why don't you go first, Jeremy? Just talk a little bit about how uh, God impacted you and your family through serving yesterday. Uh, well, first and foremost, um, <clears throat> my family and I, we uh, served at Jesus' house. Um, and that was my first time after hearing about Jesus' house in and, and so many different ways and, and things like that. That was my first time actually being able to go and, and be there and, and see the work that is done. And so the first thing I'd like to do is commend Donnie and his staff for your heart for serving the people of this community and the elderly. Um, it is truly a blessing what you do. Um, and, and it was exciting for us as a family to get to partner with you guys just for a day. And, 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 and we still don't feel like it's enough because um, we were able to see the kids um, take ownership of, of helping and serving. I'll say this, man, a lot of times as parents, and I'm just going to tell on myself, um, we, we live and we raise our kids in a way where we get discouraged sometimes because we see, you know, they, they see our wars just like we see theirs. Um, but then when you take them into an environment and you come together as a family and you serve and you see them be excited, you see them take ownership of wanting to do more of helping and and, and, and filling backpacks and wanting to do extra things and cleaning up. It's just, it, it, it builds encouragement in your heart that, that, that Jesus is a part of, of their lives as well. And they are serving the kingdom in a way with family. We get to come together as family and do it and also be with friends and then meet other believers within the church. So it was just a great atmosphere and we really appreciated the opportunity to be able to do that. That's awesome. Jarek, how... how how did it impact you? Tell me, tell me something that impacted you yesterday. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> Duh. I mean, it made me feel like that I was helping people that need it. Yeah. And it made me feel like I wanted to do it more. That's awesome. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> You're... Your mom was telling me that you were trying to put too many socks in each backpack. Is that true? No. <laughs> You're like, no, I deny that. Well, thank you guys for serving. We have Noble and Cheyenne Alexander who are new to the church, right? You just actually new to the area. You just moved here. How long ago did you move here? Do you want me? Yeah, go ahead. We moved here about a month ago for my husband's new job. Cool. So Noble, on your card, you kind of commented a little bit about how yesterday impacted you. You want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, so yesterday uh, I had the opportunity to help out with uh, Habitat for Humanity uh, over at Midland. Um, Showed up ready to do a lot more than what was prepared. I guess they had some issues with uh, lumber and everything. And so we only ended up painting a house, but it was really awesome to work with a really cohesive team. And we painted the whole outside of the house in about 40 minutes, and we were just solid and uh, got to talk and had a really nice prayer afterwards. Um, and that was a positive impact for me to like work with a team because I've been struggling finding uh, purpose and it gave me a nice sense of purpose knowing that I might not ever meet these people, but when I'm able to serve in a capacity like that, I made a positive impact on their life without ever, you know, having to not having to get too close to also just being able you give him your mic. We hand him your mic. Oh, yeah. sorry. The mic's just kind of <laughs> uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, so being able to serve and make a positive impact is just really <laughs> amazing. Don't, don't cover the bottom. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so being able to serve, make a positive impact was really amazing because uh, lately it had been f- I'd been struggling with like finding a sense of purpose or feeling a sense of purpose and being able to serve in capacity and just know that you're making a positive impact with something as simple as painting a house that only took a small part of my day was able to really 
make a huge impact on somebody's home and something that they're going to be proud of to see and have and that they're that is going to be their home and every accomplishment and every moment that they're going to have there just being able to add to that was really rewarding that's awesome that's awesome well cheyenne um why don't you share a little bit about what you did and how it impacted you and kind of some of the things that you took away yeah um, so yesterday I had the opportunity to volunteer at the Life Center. Um, they specialize in pregnancy crisis, so they help um, young parents who are expectant, male and female, they help the fathers, which that was really important to me because, um, I don't know, I just noticed that sometimes society forgets about men. And so um, we had, <laughs> we had um, the opportunity to create gift p- Uh, gift packs for the classes that they have. They have um, a lot of educational classes about um, where they teach, you know, the mothers about labor and delivery. They teach about car seat safety, CPR, all of that, everything in in between. Um, And so it was really incredible and it really touched me because um, seeing the passion from the volunteers who are just there and they're not from mid mid cities, um, I realized that it's really something the community needed and um, it really touched me just because I do have a passion for um, uh, unexpected pregnancies just because I do, um, I don't know, I love people and I love children and so whenever someone's struggling with that, I just want to be able to be part of the support system in place to help them with that. Yeah. And there were some practical things that you actually offered, right? Oh, yes. Um, I'm a freelance photographer. And so I um, went back in after and I offered my photography services and I told her I would be um, more than happy to do a free shoot for um, any of the expectant parents. Um, And so they have um, classes where they teach these parents all these skills and they can earn baby bucks where they can buy certain things and they can also win things. So um, with that, we were able to create a voucher for um, parents, unexpected parents, um, to be able to get a free photo shoot, so. That's awesome. Man. But can we give all these guys a hand as they make their way down? Thanks. Wow, so we're, let's look at our scripture for today, Luke chapter 10, verses, we're going to start in verse 25. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii, and gave, him to the, gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when you come back. Or when I come back, sorry. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. So today we're asking the question, How do I turn my moment into mission You heard Cheyenne talk about using the gifts and the things that had already been in her life to be able to continue that moment of serving into a mission of ongoing service to these, uh, to the, to the people that the Life Center is serving. It's an incredible uh, illustration of looking at how do I turn my moment into mission. But when we look in Scripture, I think we find in this passage a little bit of a clue, maybe not the whole picture, but at least some of the answer to that question, how do we turn a moment into mission? To set the scene, you have a lawyer who is standing up to test Jesus. 
This lawyer, it, it, the, the, the scripture is clear that, that he's testing Jesus. What, what the scripture is saying is he doesn't really want to know the answer. He wants to see if Jesus knows the answer. Like any good lawyer, you never ask a question that you don't know the answer to yourself. So he's trying to see if Jesus knows the answer. Jesus knows this, of course, and like many times, he responds to the lawyer's question with a question. Sometimes I wish I could do that, you know, with my, with my wife when she asks me a question I don't want to answer. I just, uh, let me ask you a question, you know. Uh, and truth be told, most of the time that's what happens whenever we try to decide where we're going to go eat. Where do you want to go eat? I don't know where you want to go eat. This is what's happening right here. Um, and so uh, Jesus asked the lawyer, well, how do you read the law? How do you interpret it? The lawyer gives the correct answer and Jesus gives him a gold star and says, good job, you knew the right answer. But then he adds a little addendum, which is a lot harder. He says, do this and you will live. There's not enough to know, but you've got to be able to do. And, you know, this is a side point, but, but isn't that so true? We can know the right things to do, but that's easy, right? It's easy to know what we should be doing. It's really hard to do what we need to do. It's, it's easy to know how to budget and, and, uh, and control your finances. It's really hard not to spend money when you really want that new TV, right? But this is what Jesus is saying. He's saying, do this, do these things you just said and you will live. Well, the lawyer doesn't really love that answer because he just wanted to get his gold star and know that he had the right answer. And so he follows up that question, like any good lawyer, with a follow-up question. And instead of responding with another question, Jesus then resp responds with a story. Or in the Bible, we call them parables. And a couple of things you need to know about parables. Parables are considered what Bible scholars would call occasional texts. So occasional texts are, are passages of Scripture which are in response to something that's happening in an environment. It could be a location where they're at, where he's pointing out different things that are happening around him. It could be an event that has just happened, a historical event or just something that's happened within the proximity. It could be a challenge or in this case, it's a direct answer to a direct question question. So it's important to remember this story, which we might be familiar with of the Good Samaritan. It's even become kind of a colloquialism in our language of we know what someone's talking about when you say there's a Good, good Samaritan, right? Um, this, this story is within the context of a direct question. And the direct question was actually asked in this case, we find out even what the motive behind that question was, which is that the lawyer wanted to justify himself. He, wanted, he just wanted an answer. He just wanted a moment answer in the context of what we're talking today. But most, if not all, parables Jesus taught were not just to try to teach a concept, although they were, and Jesus was brilliant at using stories and parables to teach deep concepts in a way that his audience could understand and interpret. But most of the time, these parables were also meant to confront an existing idea. They were meant to, to confront the audience and also provoke them to a certain response. So it's important to know anytime that you're reading in, through Scripture and you read a parable, maybe these things are going through your mind. What is this parable res in response to in the text? What is, it, what is it trying to confront in the audience? And what is it trying to what kind of response is it trying to provoke? And in this case, he's answering the question of the lawyer and the audience is the lawyer. And the response that he's trying to get across to this man is that it's not enough to know the answer. We've got to love our neighbor. Because he asks, who is my neighbor? He's wanting a moment answer. He's wanting just a, a knowledge answer. And Jesus gives him this long story. And at the end of it, he says, go and do likewise. Jesus even uses the Samaritan as the protagonist. The Samaritan, the, back, the background on that is Samaritans were hated by the Jews. Short and simple, they, the, the Jews didn't like the Samaritans. And by the way, the Samaritans didn't like the Jews either. They were pretty much at odds with each other. So the fact that Jesus is telling this story about this man who's beaten and left half dead, and you see the priest coming along, the, the natural listener at the time would probably think, okay, well, the priest is going to help him. The priest doesn't help him. He just walks right by, right? The next guy that comes by, the Levite, surely the Levite is going to stop and help this man. Nope, he walks right by. Jesus uses the Samaritan, the person that's despised, the person that is, is not tolerated, the person that is viewed as 
beneath them to be the one who helps the man who's fallen by the side. And I love how the end, there's so many little things in the Bible that are so cool, I think. At the end, you, you see that the, the lawyer's despised for the person. Because even when Jesus says, which one of these guys do you think is the neighbor? The, the lawyer can't even bring himself to say the Samaritan, right? He says, uh, I guess the one who showed mercy, <laughs> begrudgingly, right? He says, go and do likewise. The lawyer wanted a moment answer. He wanted, a, he wanted a, a, an answer that he could walk away with and feel better about himself. This is clear even in Scripture. It says that he was trying to justify himself in this question. He wanted the answer to be something simple, something that he could walk away feeling better. But he got something different, right? He got a mission answer from Jesus. He said, there's people along your path every day who need help. To love your neighbor as yourself, which you just said was the right answer. Good, good job. You know it. We all know it. The answer is to help those who are in our path. And sometimes we, we tend to make this bigger than it is. We think it has to be some big grand gesture. We've got to start a 501c3 and raise millions of dollars to feed every person who is in our area who's hungry or, or whatever the thing is. But when, re, when in reality, loving our neighbor looks just like reaching out to the people who are in our path who need help. And I want to invite my friend Donnie Kiker up to the stage. Donnie is an amazing man. I know I just said, yeah, we can give him. <laughs> Donnie is amazing. And I know I just said that um, you don't have to start a 501c3 to uh, love your neighbor. But Donnie did. He started Jesus House Odessa. Um, and, uh, and so I want to ask you a few questions today about your journey. So tell me a little bit about your moment that happened in your life. Well, I was... Uh, Make sure that's on. I think that man turned it off. There you go. I did learn not to hold it right here. I did learn <laughs> that. So now I learned how to turn it on. So he'll probably reach over and turn it off here in a minute. But anyway, good morning, church. Uh, UPS in for 20 years and ministry was just, it's in our family, it's in our DNA and you know, I'm, I married my wife and she was a PK so come to know Jesus real quick and, and uh, fell in love with ministry and you know, slinging packages around, you can use that as a ministry and we did for a long time but Lord was really tearing at my heart of doing something more. And one Christmas season, you always get a helper, which is kind of cool because you can always dump everything off on that guy, right? <laughs> and so I did, and he invited me to come feed the homeless. And I was like, mm, no, don't want to. Not my thing, you know? Yep. And so finally he got through to me, and I said, all right, I'll come help you. Well, for about six weeks, I would drive by from my house past this location, the work corner back in the day in Odessa, on my way to my church. And every time I'd pass it, I just felt really guilty by not doing it. And I knew I was supposed to. And finally, I was telling Chris earlier, it's like, I felt in my gut God telling me to turn around and go back. And I did about that six week and jumped up in the back of a truck, helped this guy, and I'm handing cups of coffee. And understand at that time, and, and I hate to say kind of this, but I saw them as bums, worthless. And you know, that's not ministry. Mm -hmm. we we have value. And I was so devaluing these men that were there. There's about 40 of them. And they were just there hanging out trying to get some work. And I realized during the time handing out coffee, I started saying, well, God bless you. God bless you. You know, those three words is all you really have to say to anybody. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Because that's everything to them. Amen? Yeah. So the next week was kind of cool. I got promoted to donuts. <laughs> And so I was no longer the coffee guy, I was the donut guy. And you know, you found out really then they really love you then. Amen. The donut guy is the, the donut guy. guy. He's yeah. The man. Yeah. So it was kind of cool. So, uh, you know, he's taken us from that to, uh, to our nonprofit, uh, which was great. Uh, Lord laid that on our heart. But you know, you don't, like you said, you don't have to start a nonprofit. 
Go to McDonald's, buy a Happy Meal, and get the toy, <laughs> and give it to a homeless person. Have gift cards to the local restaurants that are around. Hand that to them. You know, blankets this time of season. They all can't get to us and, you know, other places in Midland and things like that. But you can carry an extra blanket around and give that to them. And you can also just pull up and say, God bless you. Mm -hmm. You know? So... We have a men's facility now, a women's facility, and, and I tell you, you guys just did a wonderful job there at Jesus' house. I was so touched. And, uh, but in our kitchen, I was telling Chris, we went from, uh, from East Lincoln Coffee and Donuts, we're doing 30,000 meals a year now. 30,000. 30,000, wow. yeah. That's amazing. Feeding anybody, anybody. And how many cups of coffee? Oh, God. <laughs> well, I drink a lot of them, so there you uh, go. lots of cups there you go. of coffee, yes. No, that's awesome. Well, can we give Donnie a huge hand as he goes down? It's amazing to see how a moment can turn into mission, a moment of turning around in obedience to, to the Lord to go hand out some coffee. It's now led to 30,000 meals served every year. And maybe that's your story. Maybe it looks different for you. But the challenge today, and the thing I want you to consider, is will you see, will we see the people in our path and walk to the other side? Like Donnie was doing for six weeks, admittedly. Uh, he was invited. He saw the people, drove right past them. Or will we have that moment and let those moments of service grow into a lifestyle of missional living. And if you're like, Chris, that sounds great. I'm not real sure where to start. We actually have some great opportunities coming up over this next month that are easy wins for you and your family. Next week, you'll have the chance to grab a Christmas shoebox. Uh, this is a project called Operation Christmas Child. Operation Christmas Child is actually put on by an organization called Samaritan's Purse. Very fitting with the scripture that we're reading today, right? Um, and so, so Operation Christmas Child is a great opportunity. You can take that shoebox, you go to the store, fill it with different items. They're really clear and specific about what items can go in there. You can take your small kids and teach them how to live missionally as you go to the store and you purchase out, you purchase different items to put in there. Those shoe boxes go all around the world to millions of kids. It's really quite incredible what happens. And actually, now with technology, it's pretty cool. You can actually track and see where your box goes and, and, and see what lives are touched through those boxes. It's, it's, it's pretty incredible. So you're going to want to pick those up next week. We're also doing an outreach to uh, one of the underserved groups around Christmas time is really uh, teenagers that are in the foster care system. And that's because there's lots of toy drives and all the things that happen at Christmas time. But I, I don't know a whole lot of 16 and 17 year olds who are like, I want a, I want a, a He-Man for, for Christmas. You know, it's, it's just not, I just dated myself, an 80s kid, sorry. <laughs> It's the first thing that came to mind. Uh, well, the Nerf gun, okay, whatever it is today. They, but, but what we're going to do is we're going to start collecting gift cards for them. Gift cards to Chick-fil-A, to Synergy, different things that a, that a teenager can get excited about. And we're going to bless their socks off. We're doing this in partnership with The Attic, which was another organization that we were able to serve yesterday. Um, awesome organization that we partner with here in Midland, Odessa. So those are just two easy wins for you over the Christmas season that you can get your family involved in living missionally. But I want to invite you to enter into this challenge of thinking of the moments that you've had over the past few weeks. Maybe it was yesterday serving. Maybe it was right today during service, listening to these stories, hearing the exhortation that, that Daniel shared, or, or even in worship, maybe God was speaking to you. These moments in your life, and are you going to let them stay moments, or are you going to let them move you into mission? Are you going to let them move you into action not be like the lawyer who just wanted the right answer and a touch from God and a word from him and then move on and do the exact same thing you were doing before? Are you going to allow it to be part of you and, cre and create this longing for mission in your life? Today I'm inviting you to let this moment turn into mission for you, for your family, for our church, for the glory of God and for the betterment of people around us. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much for your presence here.
Thank you for your presence in worship. Thank you for all that you, you've done today. Lord, I pray that as we consider this question, how do I turn my moment into mission? Many of us had amazing moments yesterday serving. You were speaking to us. You were, you were encouraging us. We left with more than we came with. And Lord, I pray that in that moment that we would not just walk away and go back to business as usual, but we would allow that moment to be mission for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.